Hi everyone, James Tennant with you today. Uh, and uh, sorry about the delay between videos, I've just been away for a little while, but uh, back now, so we'll have uh, some more videos up in, on my channel soon. Uh, so I thought I'd just do a quick little overview of, uh, of views in Vault uh, so that you can learn how to customize your view and whatnot as well. So uh, really powerful features to be able to uh, customize your view and group and whatnot. So I'll show you some pretty, pretty cool stuff, stuff that I use a fair bit. Uh, so at the moment you can see my view is, uh, is all set up the way I want it to. But uh, let's take the example of there is no setup at all. Uh, the first thing you want to do is you want to jump down into your list here. So this view list here shows you all the different views you've got set up. Uh, you can have as many of these views as you want for all different types of viewing. Um, so you might have, well in this case I've got an export view, I've got uh, commercial, page view, default view, but you can have as many as you want. I'm going to go into my defined views and I'm actually just going to reset my, uh, my current views. So let's go and modify that one and reset so that we're back to standard. So when you first open up Vault, this is what it'll look like. Um, that's on the assumption that you're using Vault Workgroup or higher. So um, if you're not using Vault Workgroup, you won't have state and revision. You have a few other Vault properties there, but that's OK. You've also got these, uh, these other little ones on the right-hand side here. Personally, I don't like to put the little ones all at the right-hand side there because you've got to kind of look from here over to here to see other glyphs as well. So I actually like to group all my glyphs together. Now I can do that by going through the define custom views, selecting on the default view, modify, and in the field section I can go and choose what views I want. I can move my category glyph, property compliance, and linked to item all up to the top next to my vault status icon. So let's go and do that just the old manual way. Let's see if we go OK with that. OK and close. We'll now see that all of my icons are over here on the left hand side, which is where I wanted them. Um, but if you didn't want to do it like that, you can actually drag these around. So you can drag them and drop them to wherever you want them to be, uh, however you want them to do. So that's, uh, that's really easy to do. Just be careful when you hover over, you'll see, uh, for example, entity icon. You can see there's actually a little drop down there and it allows you to filter based on the entity itself. Same thing goes with these ones, but you just don't get into as much trouble on the big properties because there's, uh, there's more room to click and drag. So in my case, uh, with these little ones, I'm probably accidentally clicking on this filter without knowing it. So just be careful when you're dragging around these little ones not to click on that filter drop down. But if you wanted to click the filter drop down, you could anyway. So that's, um, that's all pretty nice. Let's go in there and add some more columns. So on the default view, I'm going to modify the default view and go to fields. And I'm going to add a few more fields in there. So the first one I want to add is description. I want to add um, uh, file extension. No, let's keep going down. I want project. I want subcategory. And I'll put one more in there, security class, and go OK. So now you can see all of my properties have been spread out at the end here. I can drag these around and move them to wherever I want them to be. In my case, I want state all the way at the end and revision after that. I want description in front of project, and that's about what I want it to be set out like. I can resize these columns to however I want to do it, whatever I want. And now whenever I select on a item or whatever it's going to be, it's all going to be set out the way I want it. And you can also see that uh, any subfolders are grouped into folders. And you can see any files are grouped into files, which is really nice. This is something that I'm going to show you in a moment as well. It's, um, it's a really, uh, really good feature. But that's, uh, that's the basics of setting up default views or modifying your default view. You can also go ahead and make a new view. And let's call this one James's view or whatever you wanted to call it, and you're able to modify this one to include other information. So you might not want subcategory, get rid of a few of these, and maybe we'll add address um, and category name. That'll do. And you can see things have been spaced out accordingly. So uh, depending on what view you want to use now, you can flick between the views really, really easily. 
which is good. Okay, what else can you do in here? Let's go to the default one. Custom filters you can go and add as well. So for example, you can go in here and add a filter to say, okay, well, I only want to find anything in the manufacturing category. So category contains MFG, oops, add that and go OK. What that now means is on my default view, it won't actually show anything that's not in that manufacturing category. So even when I go and click on other things like in client work or whatever it is, uh, work files, only things that are being shown up are this blue icon here, which is, um, which is my manufacturing category. So the rest of everything is basically hidden. And that's all just set up in my view. So let's say I wanted to modify that one, get rid of that custom filter, remove that one, OK. And now we're back to a normal view where we can see all the different types of categories. And you can see there's another category there. Um, so back in here, other settings, uh, you can also go and show in a few of these ones as well. So if you wanted to get rid of the grid lines, you can see the grid lines in here, you can get rid of them. Uh, automatic uh, resizing. We're going to go through this one group by box as well. That's, uh, that's a really good one as well. But in this case, this is just showing you how it looks if you didn't have any grid lines. Personally, I kind of like the grid lines, so I'm going to jump back in here and turn them back on. The other thing I'm going to turn on is this uh, group by box, but I'm actually not going to do it through here. I'm going to do it just on my, um, not my ribbon strip, my toolbar at the top. So by selecting on that, that actually puts in your group by box, which is this section at the top here. And this is a really good way of, uh, of grouping things if you're, uh, if you're wanting to sort through however things, how, how things all look. So if we went to um, CAD templates, for example, no, that's not got any subfolders. This one here, you can see design data has both folders and files. So this is actually grouping my files and folders by their entity type. And that's what that's sitting in there to do. This guy here is entity type, which means we're grouping by entity type, which is file or folder or custom object. There's a few other ones as well. So you can see how the group by works, but if you wanted to add some more sections to this, so for example, I'm in here and I don't have any subfolders, but I do want to group things by their project. So when I drag and drop project into here, I can now group everything by the project that they sit in, which is a really, really handy way of, uh, of sorting what, uh, what information belongs to what area. I can see the things that I haven't yet added a value to, Otherwise, I can see my go-kart, my car suspension projects. If I do have a lot of these projects, for example, let's go to miscellaneous, you'll see that I've got actually a lot of projects in here. I wouldn't want to collapse them all having to do this. I can just right-click in here and say full collapse. And you can see all of the uh, collapsed items there. And this is all the projects that I'm running uh, inside this miscellaneous folder. So it's a very, very good way of sorting out what you're actually interested in. If you don't want to see that anymore, you just drag it back out and your group reverts back to just entity type. You can actually remove the entity type as well if you really wanted to, but in my case, I don't need to for now. Other times you might want to, it's up to you. Another one I might want to do is security class, for example, and let's collapse all them. And you can see commercial, restricted, UK, Whatever you're looking for, I've got, um, I've got it however you want it to do. I uh, probably need to change uh, a couple of these ones to suit however the other ones are. So these ones here, this uncontrolled should be undashed controlled, but you get the idea. It's a good way of actually discovering inconsistencies with your properties. Anyway, that's a, that's a little bit of an overview of how to use um, a few of those tools. Anything you can add into that group buy box there. So um, it really doesn't matter what you're looking for if you're wanting to group things by their state. Uh, you can see everything in here is uh, already um, work in progress, but you've got things that are released and things that are not released. Very, very easy to do. Um, very, very handy tool. So have a play with that. Um, this, is, this is one of the reasons why I don't think folders are necessary. Once you've got all the metadata on there, you can really find anything and group things really, really easily. So that group by box is quite good. Okay, so um, thanks very much for watching. Let me know if there's anything else you wanted to see. But um, I'll see you next time.